Hey everybody. everybody! It's one of, well, sometimes our favorite time of the month. It, it depends on the month. <laughs> but anyway, today we are going to be talking about all the books that we plan to read in October. That's right, it's the October TBR video. Who's decided to be ambitious again? Uh, <laughs> mostly her. I have no ambitions, really. Yes, I'm being very ambitious. But for good reason, because I just feel like this is the right month to be reading all of these books. Right. Hilariously, we're traveling for like a week of this month, so God knows oh, if I'm going to read anything. Aren't we? So that's right, October. Gosh. We're going to see how that goes. We're going to see how that goes. All right. Anyway, okay, so the first section of books I'm talking about are actually books that I am reading with other people this month. Cool. The first one I actually don't own as a physical book, but it is Covet by J.R. Ward, which I'm reading with Rachel from Hello Chelly. It is a book about angels. So urban fantasy with angels. Don't know much more than that. I do know that it crosses over with the Black Dagger Brotherhood series at some point. Remains to be seen how that is, so I'll leave it at that. But I'm also reading for Fairython, The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This will be my third, fourth time reading it, Gosh. which I'm looking forward to. I will include the breakdown down below and the live show details down below as well. It's going to be hosted on Jane's channel, and I believe Mackie will be joining us since he has also just read The Cruel Prince. Oh, yeah. Totally joining that So one. quick summary is basically this is the story of a mortal girl named Jude who has been taken away to fairy and basically grown up there and has decided that she wants to find a way to have a position of power so that she can stay in the world of fairy but also not be tormented by anyone who has tried to torment her in the past. And how that plays out for her, which if you've read the book, you probably already know, but I am excited to read this one and then discuss it with everyone because it's going to be fun. It's pretty good. It's, it's a good book. Speaking of reading with other people, I will also be reading Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray, which is the third book in the Diviners series. Mm -hmm. And I am reading this one for the Diviners read along with Jane, uh, Melanie, Madeline, and Chelsea. I'll link all that information down below as well. Don't know what this one is about because obviously third book in the series. And at the point of filming this, I'm just about to start Lair of Dreams for September. So can't even look at it to see the plot. But basically the series starts with the Diviners, which is about Evie O'Neill. She gets sent to New York City and gets involved in a paranormal murder mystery and it goes from there and I am so curious to see where it goes in the second book and in the third book so I'll be joining them for that as well. Awesome. And the last book in this section is one that I plan to read with Kristen. It is actually a series finale and that is Capturing the Devil by Carrie Maniscalco which is the last book in the Stalking Jack the Ripper series and this is going to focus on Audrey Rose's and Thomas's first murder mystery set in the States which is going to be very interesting and I, it also basically concludes their story and I'm dying to know what happens although not literally even though this is going to be a murder mystery so okay that was my first section what about yours alrighty now these are coming off of Alexa's what we read pile I'm definitely reading these two books this is Libra Dugo's ninth house adult uh, fantasy uh, horror suspense either way there's a lot of terrible Mystery. trigger warnings to, to be had with this book a lot of disturbing scenes I believe I've read enough, you know, Game of Thrones and Stephen King and Anne Rice. You know, there's there's enough kind of, like, very little shocks me at this point in time, but do I want to put myself through these things? We don't know. We'll find out if these are garden variety type stuff that maybe people who've never read this kind of stuff are kind of get shocked by, and that's sort of what Alexis the case is. But either way, it centers around a woman who sort of gets rope-a-doped into keeping a secret society uh, in its place, but then at the same time sort of gets embroiled in a murder mystery that involves said secret society. So... Or does it? Or does it? So there's that. So very interesting. I am a fan of Lee Bardugo. This is not my go-to genre. I am looking forward to seeing her stellar, uh, which again, I think that's what everybody can agree on, whether this is your kind of story or not. The stellar uh, writing prowess shines mm -hmm. through and pulls you through. And I am looking forward to, I just love Lee Bardugo. Me too. And I, I think she's great. I would read, I would read like, like a supermarket list that she had written. Basically. So. And then there is Kings of the Wild, which I have been told is like the Expendable meets... It's like the Expendables meets... No, a you made that comparison. Because I've never I've seen I've told myself that I... <laughs> That this, because I've never seen this. The, the, well, because it's a story about a, about uh, about a bunch of old sort of not so over the hill, but kind of close adventurers slash kind of band of but mercenaries. Merce <laughs> they're a bunch of mercs, hence the Expendables. Where one of them, uh, the leader of the band, sort of gets the band back together and says, "My daughter is in a city that is being besieged by terrible creatures. We need to come together and rescue her." Which to me is great. And the way Alexa put, uh, puts it when she was sort of reading this to me is it feels like this is a Dungeons and Dragons game where the party only rolls 20s or 1s. So funny again. And nothing so in funny. between. And I'm just like, that beautiful contrast, like, I'm just like, oh my god. So if it's good, it's part, great. It and doesn't the best even part, feel unnatural. 
Like, it's just, it just so happens. So they're all natural 20s and 1s. Like, the entire so. plot doesn't feel like it's, like, forced because that's happening. No, it, it literally just, just happens. Like, it really feels like the roll of the dice yep. was, that's a critical, that's a, that's a, that's a 20, or that is a natural one. You guys are so screwed. And the fact that they're old, old mercs is, well, Dude, that's they the expendables. about aches and pains, it's great. I was like, I relate to this. So I will be, and I, 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 I feel like, you know, I've, I've, I've felt this way for the last, like, 45 years. So I feel like I'll be reading about something very uh, close to my heart. So a bunch of old men trying to do the best that they can. So this is definitely... I really think you'll thing. enjoy it. Now that before I, I finish it off, I am, uh, I'm, I'm dubbing October my graphic novel uh, backlog mm. um, cle uh, cleanup. Starting with, you know, part one, which is sort of all of the graphic novels set in this world, but are not magical or fantastical and are more kind of like slice of life type deal. Okay. Be Prepared, uh, which is about um, a girl who's kind of, you know, just the forlorn look on her face that she's at summer camp. Oh. Reminds me of Lin-Manuel Miranda uh, during that one interview. No, during that one interview, uh, Graham Norton was able to pull up some of the some of the camp letters that Lin had tweeted about how terrible camp life was for him. He just wanted out. So I, I feel for that. I kind of always wanted to have that summer camp experience, but never did because they didn't do that where I grew up. And speaking of summers, uh, all summer long, which is, you know, a couple of 13 year olds sort of growing up and I already read the first part of it and I'm just like, oh my god, they are for the first time retiring their, they keep score of how much fun they have every summer oh. by, by, by racking, uh, you know, the, the number of things that they've done according to point, by, by point system and they want to beat their record like every single time. So they were at 240, sorry, 224 points last summer. And now in the, thir the, the summer of their 13th year, one of them's going to camp and she's like, you didn't even tell me. And she's like, well, it's time to not do that anymore. And she's kind of like devastated. So I'm just like, <gasps> yes, <laughs> feelings. And so this is the stuff. I'll get into the rest of my uh, backlog graphic novels in a bit, but for now. Fun story. I just realized the three books in this next section are all by authors I have never read before. Ooh. And they all have covers that have some sort of creepy cool. plant life vibe to them there. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're gonna start with The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd Jones. This one is about two siblings, I think, and they basically work as gravediggers in a remote village at the foot of a harsh and deadly mountain range that was once home to the Fae. The problem in this village, though, is that the dead don't always stay dead, <laughs> apparently, and the corpses start attacking the town, and so they have to figure out what is going on and solve the mystery. I've never read anything by Emily Loy Lloyd Jones. But Mackie actually has read one of her books. I think it's called The Hearts We Sold. I am looking forward to this, though, because Faye, dead bodies, gotta go on a quest together to figure out what's going on. I mean, I'm here for it. And then we have a book that I know Kristen from Super Space Chick really enjoyed, and that is The Wicked Deep by Shay Earnshaw. There's a cursed town called Sparrow, and every year people die in this cursed town. That's terrible. Because <laughs> there, there were three sisters, like, years and years ago, they were sentenced to death for being witches. And so there's a curse on the town. The ghost of the three sisters comes back, sort of tempts people to die thing. yep yeah so it's basically like at this point people in the town accept that for what it is but in this particular story i'm pretty sure that they discover something new about it and the last book is also something i know Kristen really enjoyed it is called the devouring gray same thing there is a town uh there are families who to keep some semblance of power have to enact this sort of ritual i'm pretty sure in the town i don't actually know specifics because usually when it comes to stories like these three i'd rather go into it not knowing too much just so that i'm surprised by whatever twists and turns it takes but i felt like i should be reading all these books because october creepy month very creepy yeah so that's the end of that section Alrighty, now for my graphic novels. I want to split them up in sort of like two groups. So the first group uh -huh. is sort of like a random mixed bag of like uh, stuff. So let's start with the most benign looking of them all. This is Sanity and Tallulah Field oh, Trip. It's Sanity and Tallulah. Sequel. Sanity and Tallulah is a sequel to Sanity and Tallulah. Uh, which you love. Uh, which I totally love. It's a, it, Sanity and Tallulah is a story about a couple of kids who grew up on a space station that's sort of like their home. And shenanigans ensue when their illegal experiment to create, you know, bioengineer a new life form, mm -hmm. which they have lovingly dubbed Princess Sparkle, the Destro that, devourer yeah. of worlds or destroyer of worlds or something like that, sort of gets loose on the space station and it dovetails with sort of a current current event that they can't necessarily prove that was caused by Princess Sparkle, devourer of worlds or not, but happened anyway. Yeah. And their sets of parents are just like, what is happening with these two children? And this is part two of their adventures and I was so happy that they, that they did this. I had a fun chat with Molly Brooks at Book Expo where I 
gushed about, I love Princess Sparkle Story of Worlds. And she's like, that's great. That was a great idea until you have to like write that down over and over again in every panel that they mention her. And you're like, oh yeah. So I'm just like, ah, okay, I get that. As a creator, I, I understand how mm -hmm. that's kind of shooting yourself in the foot creatively. Uh, it's a lot of drudgery, but it's worth it. So looking forward to this. Iron Magicians, The Search for the Magic Crystals. This takes place in a fictional steampunk version of Paris. Cool. In the 19th century where people sort of create weapons. In fact, the, the Eiffel Tower is a weapon itself. Wow. And shenanigans ensue from there forward. So uh, I kind of like it. Very steampunk, uh, steampunk fantasy, sci-fi hybrid kind of deal. So overdue. This is The Spill Zone by Alex Puvland. It's basically setting around a girl named Addison who has, who in her childhood, like her town was destroyed by something in upstate New York and has stayed destroyed and messed up and they've called it the spill zone. She tries to come back to it, make sense of it, because there's something uh, ominous in mm -hmm. the spill zone that knows her by name. And Crazy. I'm like, done. Totally mine. And finally, uh, totally random because this is not my typical thing, but we got this in the mail. It appealed to me. It's called Head Games. The graphic also, I assume there's like a book or um, whatever, by uh, Craig McDowell and, and Kevin Singles. So it's Hector Lasseter who has retired. It's 1957. He's retired. No more adventures for him, but he gets the skull of Mexican revolutionary Pancho Villa. Pancho Villa. And if they could just survive crossing the desert and sell it to the highest bidder, they'll get the money that they need and sort of retire even better okay. if they survive. So it's one of those, I got a head to sell now. All right, fine. Which leads me to That's so random. I know, and, and this is like this is the, this is I, I imagine myself like just sitting down one weekend and I just like binging this entire pile. I could see that, and and just it'll just it'll go quick. It'll go quick. It'll be the whole day or maybe like the entire weekend, but um, super fun because I like not doing anything. That's always fun. And then and then finally getting around to sort of my backlog DC graphic novels. So three of these are, are advanced reading copies, and one of them I had to buy uh, because it was out. So Ridley Pearson uh, penned Super Sons. Right? So yeah. this is part of... Uh, Book one, the Polar Shield Project. The Polar Shield Project. So this is DC Zoom, which will probably no longer be DC Zoom anymore. I think it's just DC. It's just DC now. Uh, and uh, it's, it's again a series of graphic novels targeted at younger readers and sort of like teen readers. And this is a different version, I want to say, of uh, John Kent and uh, John Kent, the son of Lois uh, Lane and Clark Kent. Mm -hmm. And uh, Damian Wayne. Son of Bruce Wayne and Talia al Ghul. It's, so it's, it's another Elseworld, right? Where Ian has to, you know, pretend to not be an assassin and go to school where John is because, you know, things are a little too hot in Gotham right now. And they become classmates and uh, guess, you know, they're like the world's best in training. So there's that. And then there are the young adult graphic novels targeted at teens and, and young adults. So one is about Harley Quinn, Breaking Glass, by uh, Mariko Tamaki. So looking forward to that. One's about Harley as a teen and she's sort of like... You know, she she has a friend who's an activi environmental activist mm. named Ivy, and she sort of kind of grows up, and she's skating the edges of, do I join the bad kids if I'm really one of the bad kids, or do I want to make a stand for what, kind of what's right when the time comes to not mess around and do stuff? Mm. So this is Harley's alternate universe coming of age. Then there is Lauren Miracle, who wrote a Catwoman tale, uh, illustrated by Isaac Goodhart. Goodhart. This is Selena growing up. So this is another alternate universe where Selena is sort of sort of understanding. And apparently there was a lot of work put into the fashion put in here because they really had to like, you know, there's something about the way Selena carries herself and what she wears and what she prizes that sort of tells her uh, who and what she is. So even that's a nice little Easter egg that you can see, like what is her growth? What is she wearing in the first few panels and what is she wearing after the story? So I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to discovering how Selena grew up in this universe. And finally, Mara Tidebreaker by Daniel Page, who I am told when she was paddling this thing said, if you want, and this happened sort of in Arthur Curry's younger years, mm -hmm. and this is Mara going out of the ocean and finding this true king and going, well, who is this dude? When they were younger. And basically, I think Daniel Page, if I'm not mistaken, uh, just basically told the authors, well, do you remember Jason Momoa from like his younger years? And they, to they, and they rolled with it. This is not like little blonde you know Arthur, Arthur Curry. Curry this is Jason Momoa from Baywatch <laughs> and I'm like I'm for that I, I like that version of uh, Aquaman anyway and so it would be great to see you know um, Mara as Tidebreaker what, what she does here you know it's obviously around her character and how, how she reconciles like her biases and her hopes and you know it's not about the boy but uh, the boy is involved so we'll see how that goes. So yeah, that is, that's my binge. That'll be a great weekend for me. My last couple of books are all series related, which is why they're all grouped together. And they sort of require binging. So 
The first duology I'm going to talk about is Girls of Paper and Fire and Girls of Storm and Shadow, which is the sequel. So Girls of Paper and Fire is a book about a girl named Lei, and she is essentially chosen to be a paper girl that serves the king as his concubine. And most people consider that an honor. It's not really an honor because you end up being forced to serve his every whim. Not great, not fun, but while she is serving as a paper girl, Lei ends up falling in love with someone and she realizes that there's actually a revolution going on within the walls of the castle that she finally is privy to and this book is sort of her coming to terms with what she's willing to stand up and fight for. And this is the direct sequel after the events of this book, so I need to read this one again in order to get to this one with, you know, everything fresh in my mind, so ah, that's going right. to be happening. So the reread. Speaking of rereads, here's another book. This Ooh. is a commitment. This is the first of the two big commitments I have in October. So I intend to binge read the entire Nevernight Chronicle. So that is a reread of Nevernight and a first read of God's Grave and Dark Dawn. And these books are all by Jay Kristoff. So the only thing I will tell you about it is that Nevernight is the story of Mia Corveyor, who saw her entire family murdered in front of her eyes. God. And she decides that she wants revenge. And in the first book in particular, she ends up going to a school for assassins and sure. training yeah. and learning there and honing her skills so that she can enact revenge on every single person who was involved in her family's deaths. I don't know more than that because this is the only book I've read but I really liked it at the time. I know a lot of people don't particularly find this style of writing or Jay Kristoff's particular like brand of it in this series their cup of tea but I really liked it and I'm also one of the very few people who was like fine with the footnotes. The footnotes for me are just an extension of his world building and I like that they're footnotes because in theory you could skip them and not really miss that much but if you are enjoying the world a lot it's nice to like go down and be like okay this is a fun fact about this particular part of it which I really enjoyed. So I am looking forward to binging this entire series because I really want to know what happens. I know a lot of people who really enjoyed the second and the and I want to be one of those people, so that's happening. Sounds good. However, that is not nearly as ambitious as this last thing that I am going to attempt to do before the end of the year, and I really wanted to try and do it in October. So, I have The Wise Man's Fear by Patrick Rothfuss on my TBR. This is the second book in his King Killer Chronicle series. This is the one that follows The Name of the Wind. So, I read The Name of the Wind in January, absolutely loved it. 10 out of 10 will probably read it again before the year ends because it's just that good and that wow. interesting. This is a commitment because it's over a thousand pages long. Jeez. Who knows if I'll actually do it and complete it, but I would like to because I really enjoyed getting to know both in the first book and I would like to hear more of his story, which is obviously what's in the second book. The interesting thing to me is that some people absolutely love this entire series. I know a lot of people like that, but then I've been seeing lately that a few people actually didn't love the second book as much as the first book. So I will also be interested to see how I feel about it. I'm hoping I'm going to be in the camp of people who love it, but we'll have to see. But this is the most ambitious thing on my TBR, so we'll see how that goes. Slides it out. <laughs> anyway, those are all the books that are on our October TBR. Is very ambitious for me. Once again, I do not intend to try and force myself to finish all those you're... books, but I'm going to try very, very hard, especially since I'll be on a plane for a very long time. So just realize your bookish like life is very Slytherin-y. I know it's so dark and uh, and I'm and I'm creepy. the puff when it comes to reading. It's like I like this one. I'll just read that. <laughs> you know, like no, I'll be ambitious. And I'm loyal to my like authors. I'll just read their books over and over again. It's crazy. Meanwhile, I'm just like I need to read everything, <laughs> or I'll try to. Fair. Anyway, those are all our TBR books. So let us know what you guys are planning to read for October. We'd love to hear it. And if you've read any of the books that we include in our TBRs, we'd love to know what you think of them as well. And we will see you guys for a new video soon. Bye. Bye.